um, I often take requests from people um, from all over the internet. And someone on Twitter was asking for tips related to preventing meltdowns and shutdowns. Oh, so first, I guess I should say um, that meltdowns and shutdowns both result from the brain being just overloaded and it just can't handle or take on or process anything else um, and not all autistic people even have meltdowns and shutdowns um, some autistic people have them when they're younger and then they grow out of them um, some autistic people have said that they used to have meltdowns when they were younger and then as they've grown older, they have, for one reason or another, learned um, that they shut down now instead of melting down. Um, and so, I guess, first, uh, I'll also explain the difference. Uh, a shutdown and a meltdown. A meltdown is just a very, like, outwardly visible, almost explosion of emotion where it's very visible that the person in front of you is in extreme distress and it's not hideable. The person may be crying or yelling or screaming or uh, shaking or, uh, you know, different things. Uh, and it's, it's very visible and that's a meltdown. Uh, a shutdown, um, which a lot of people defer to because it's safer and more socially acceptable, is where the brain is still overloaded, there's still too much going on, and the person is still overwhelmed, but instead of having this outward um, explosion of energy, it's an implosion, uh, kind of shut down, in, shut in on oneself. Uh, and this looks very different. It may be the person is just kind of uh, sitting in the corner, not moving. They may be you know, crying quietly or crying or just very still or, um, and you may not even notice something is happening. They may just kind of, uh, go non-responsive on you. It can look a little bit like a panic attack a or a meltdown or a shutdown can sometimes look and feel a little bit like a panic attack. Um, and there are different things, uh, that can trigger them. Uh... So, there are um, sensory things. Some autistic people can have a meltdown triggered by sensory overload. Um, and then, you know, autistic people can also have meltdowns or shutdowns in relation to, like, prolonged stress, like, over time. And then, like, finally, just, like, the one more thing that may seem like a really small thing is just the last thing and it's like I can't take anymore it's just too much and then there's the meltdown and the shutdown and so that's like a, a building building gradually getting to that point thing and the person may feel this growing tension inside of them and then there'll be a release when the person finally does have a meltdown or shutdown or uh, you know it could even be like more instantaneous if um, maybe there is a like something that is suddenly very traumatic or suddenly very scary or maybe a sudden just change to a situation um that's just very rapid uh well, i mean and there are different triggers for everyone um but something that you know like anyone can be overwhelmed um with like sudden bad news or uh, something like that, like, you know, the news of the death of a loved one, like that could be completely overwhelming for anyone and the brain just can't process anymore and can shut down. Uh, and so, it, and anyone can have like an overloaded brain and just the brain can just be done or you just can't think clearly and you can't think straight. Um, but, you know, for some reason it, this does seem to be more common, uh, with autistic people, you know. Uh, so, you know, autistic meltdowns and shutdowns are kind of thought of as a specific thing, uh, but I kind of want to 
just say that I think, you know, depending on the situation, um, this might not necessarily always be a something that only autistic people experience. I just think the frequency uh, is definitely greater and maybe the triggers um, might be a little bit more sensitive with some autistic people. Uh, so those are just, oh, and the video is supposed to be all about avoiding meltdowns and shutdowns, and I've just barely explained what they are. Ah! Um, yeah. Avoiding them, you know, that, that is just one, knowing yourself and learning to really, really pay attention uh, to how you're feeling and if you have difficulty you know regulating your feelings and being in tune with your feelings and your emotions then that might be um, keeping a, a track or a log or a journal of um, you know what's leading up to a meltdown or what's causing a meltdown so you can know you know if something is triggering you to have a meltdown uh, a lot of people say that you know sometimes just social like a a really busy like social function or event that's just really loud and really busy and overwhelming can be kind of like a sensory overload kind of a trigger uh, and so being able to know where the quiet spaces are so that you can go and get away and be somewhere quiet and re just balance yourself out and just relax for a little while and um, be really willing to advocate for yourself and say, I need to step away and take a break and get away from this. Or, you know, I need to leave the party early and go home. Um, just know, learning to recognize that point when you've had enough and not pushing past that point to where you're going past the stress point. Uh, and you've, you've, you've pushed yourself too far and you've gone too far and you've done too much. Um, and so a lot of it is just really learning your boundaries um, and respecting them and not letting people, you know, push you past where you know uh, you're comfortable and what you can handle. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, um, those are just some of my thoughts um, about meltdowns and shutdowns and hopefully um, tips about preventing them and I hope that's helpful uh, you know let me know if you have thoughts or uh, you know if you have tips for avoiding meltdowns and shutdowns in the comments I'd love to hear that because that's really what people were asking for and since everyone's different um, it would be great to have other people's advice uh, because I really only have one perspective on this uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, and I might do more videos like this in the future. Uh, anyway, have a, have a good week. Bye! <laughs> like a sheep.